John, where where do we begin? Where do, do we begin, begin to tell the story of you? No need to film. Welcome to the Film Photography Podcast. My name is Michael Rosso, and I'll go around the table to the left. Uh, Mr. Owen McCafferty. Guten Tag. John Fidelli. Dadu. Leslie Lazenby. Hi, everyone. And my name is Michael Rosso. And this, this podcast is uh, mostly focused on home movies, 8mm home movies, Super 8 home movies, 16mm home movies. In my life, I had zero experience with regular 8 other than the fact that at some point in my life, I was too young to n- remember. You're not old enough. Right. My dad shot regular eight. I remember when he stopped shooting regular eight because... See, the thing is about regular eight, I don't remember what my my dad's camera looked like. Mm. But I remember the hotel in Wildwood and the beach chair that he left oh. it under in his case. Yeah. Oh. Someone oh. stole his camera. Oh. <laughs> He left it under his chair. We, we walked away from the pool. So there's no footage of Wildwood, New Jersey. So then I guess I was old enough. I guess I was seven or eight. Yeah. And at that point, I remember the discussion in the family about getting a new camera. And that's Big when... Deal. Upgrading to Super 8. Walks into the local camera store in 1973 or 4. And he, the guy behind the counter gives you the pitch. Mm-hmm. And he's going to sell you a Super 8 or something mm-hmm. that's brand new. Mm-hmm. But and it wasn't just the camera. It had to be the projector, too. So it was an investment to change the It system. was. Oh, wow. And I specifically remember Whoa. he didn't buy the Kodak oh, because he yeah. said he didn't like the way you have to hold it, like a sandwich. Like a hamburger. Really? Yes. It was a Kodak XL, I guess. Yes. I remember specifically he said he did not like the style of it. Interesting, because there were other models available. But that was the top of it. And they were the best cameras, Super 8 cameras that Kodak yeah. ever made. What did your dad get? I'm going to tell you what he got. Here it is. And I shot all of my student films on this. So th- my dad bought a Bell & Howell Focusmatic 672 XL. It's a great camera. Focusmatic. Why was everything called XL? Existing light. Uh, wow, I didn't know that. <laughs> XL. Wow, it was, it was made for blown. ectochrome... X, uh, extra Chrome 160 when it first mm-hmm. came out, Type A. And the strange thing is, you know, when I was a kid in the late 70s, early 80s shooting, you know, it's hard to, like, think. I mean, no internet, no eBay. Like, this is all I had. Mm-hmm. There was no getting another camera, no shopping for another camera. Oh, you're wrong. What? Uh, the back of photo magazines. <laughs> oh, oh, man. But I didn't have the money. Oh, true. I didn't have the money. Sure. You know, by the mid to late 70s, my dad, you know, quote unquote, wound down his movie making (laughs) career. And then I was of the age, I picked it up. And then I would shoot every summer. Did you use that camera in collage? I did. Really? I shot my first. uh, The Kodaks that they gave us. I shot my Super 8 24 minute epic for Film One class. What was that one? I don't think I was involved. Attack of the Potato People. <laughs> Can I watch that on Amazon Prime? Did you stop me? Maybe. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. Who, who were the potato people? <laughs> well, it, the film was called Psychosis in Action. Okay. Susan Tarbox, Professor Susan Tarbox, she coined it. She's like, ooh, because she always waved her arms. Remember? She's like, oh, attack of the potato people. <laughs> They weren't supposed to be potato people. No, it just so happens there was a monster in the movie. Multiple monsters. Whenever they, like, they would basically come into a house, bonk someone on the head, make them unconscious, then rob the house. And then in every scene where they're taking stuff, for whatever reason, there's a bag of potatoes really? in the back of the scene. Yeah. No, not on purpose. Just a complete coincidence. Just a complete... Wow. And then I, and I shot in different households. That's really weird. So she was just like, oh, attack of the potato people. Okay. But anyhow, where do we begin? At the beginning. Okay. We want to begin with a letter? Uh, well, first of all, hey, I've been... It sounds like we need to... Uh, oh, <laughs> I've got to put... Oh. Hey, Mark O'Brien. Hey there. You were over in the uh, school camera donation area? I was up to my neck in cameras. Oh, is that what we're calling the bathroom now? Did you wash your hands? <laughs> <laughs> they still have camera It on. really, I mean... So the FPP have an ongoing school camera donation program. People donate cameras. We vet them, organize them, put them in boxes, and send them out to schools for no charge. It really is an amazing thing, right, Mark? It really is. And 
it's one way to see a lot of interesting cameras that we might never have otherwise run across because you get all kinds of stuff coming in. On the other hand, end up getting a lot of good cameras that students can use, and some are more modern than others, and it depends what their needs are. And But so far, I mean, they just keep coming in. Yeah, it's endless. I think that our listeners would be probably dumbfounded. Mm. By just the the sheer you know the boxes and boxes of lenses. No, I was. Oh, you were. Found it every day. Walking into this building, I mean, you see pictures of it on social media, and it, it's just this, right? I mean, it's just where you record sure. the FPP. But then, like, you go into the back, and it's like, un- I mean, I, I, there's no way to just. You have no idea what that many cameras in one space looks like, but it is overwhelming, and it's amazing that like the FPP can can do that. Yeah. It, it looks like a hoarder's nightmare. Oh my God. Well, but it also looks like heaven, right? Yeah, well, yeah. Cameras. I mean, yeah. it's like, I've, I've just never seen anything like it. And I've seen a lot of cameras in one place, but not, not like this. So in that area yes. is, you know, be, because we're vetting cameras for students, whenever in a box, because a lot of people are receive so many emails from people who don't listen to the FPP, mm-hmm. they're just Googling. Yep. So they find us and they are cleaning out their parents' and grandparents' houses. Owen, because you are Mr. Movie, mm-hmm. he instinctively just started looking on the shelves. And how many ca- how many moving picture cameras did you find? How many? Uh, we pro- oh, Gosh, I don't know. Seven? <laughs> eight? Yeah. Wow, amazing. It is. What Mr. is that? Movie. I Let's... sent him a message on that camera. What is so excited about question. that? Uh, well, I was excited because it looked like it looked like a Kodak uh, Magazine 8. Which... That's what I thought. Now I've tried to open not. it and I couldn't get it open. Well, it why was... is it? What's this domed area here? Uh, that's that's how the film is advanced through. So that's like the... Um... The main gear? Yeah, well, but so this is where the sprockets is are. Is there a cartridge so in there? Okay. There's no cartridge. You don't, it's, you don't need a cartridge. It's single eight. Okay, so for put some foam in that and shoot it. for folks who don't know, can you give us a rundown for home movie, mm-hmm. home movies, what formats exist? Like all of them, or you, would you say for for the average mom and dad, for the average Joe, average Joe, average Joe? Yeah. So there was sixteen millimeter, which was popular until the introduction of regular eight millimeter in nineteen thirty something, thirty seven. Don't know the number off the top of my head. 16 millimeter was great, but the cameras were big. They were heavy. They were expensive. Film was expensive. So regular eight came out. Regular eight millimeter is also called regular eight, double eight, standard eight. Um, why? 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 Don't know. Oh, it just five. is. It's like stop, step, f stop. They yeah. give everything three names. So you're telling me that regular eight is the same as double eight? Correct. That 25 foot cartridge. Spool. Spool. Thank you. Spool. Yeah. Thank you. There it is. Listen that is, that. this is regular 8. Regular 8, double 8, standard 8. That looks like 16. Now, is there an alternate? wide film. Oh. Yep. But it's 8. It's yes. Different perfs. Uh, different types of perfs. We don't have any to. Hey, Mike, I'm so confused right now. <laughs> <laughs> so get this, John. Yeah. Yes. Because I started shooting this. Yeah. Because no one on the planet knows the film exists, but it does. Yeah, there's, there, we're a select few. It's 16 millimeter fil- film, 25 feet. You shoot That's it. The one you, yep. flip. you flip it. Okay. Shoot the other side. And they slice it. Send it to your lab. They slice it. Splice the two, the middles together. They slice it nice and thin. Nice yes. and thin. Okay. And then they assemble it on a fifty-foot roll. And, there, and there's your your slitter. And that's a daylight oh my god. Spool. This daylight is a daylight spool. spool. This is the slitter? That's the slitter. Am I going to cut right. myself? No, it. just open it, but careful. It'll pop so out. you could do this at home? You could, I do it at home. Oh. Look at go. the size of it. Look at the size of it. So Tiny. what do you do? You put the canister Here. in there, and then you just go like this? What? So you... <laughs> and if you, if you... Oh, um, okay. one of those bags has... I, I can demonstrate. This looks like a salt and pepper shaker. So for folks listening at home... Here's the thing, and I just got into this, and one was just sitting on the shelf here forever, a Revere 88. Owen or somebody hit me to the fact that FOMA still makes still makes 8mm regular double eight, double eight film. Yep. So I bought 55 rolls, 5 rolls for me, and 50 rolls for you guys at home. Mm-hmm. It's in the FPP online store. These cameras are $10 on eBay. Yeah, sadly, the, the some of these guys selling on eBay, it's like ten dollar camera, fourteen dollars shipping. Stop right, it! Right. Stop! It's I don't Why know. You do this to me, Daniel? Yes. Why you do this? So uh, the Revere worked. 
I bought the film. I shot a roll. I haven't... I haven't had it processed yet, but I'm just blown away because there are so many cameras available. Oh, yeah, and they're cheap. They're going to be a lot cheaper generally than, like, finding a Super 8 camera on eBay. Right. So now, for for regular 8, Mm -hmm. was there anything other than the 25 millimeter? Yes. So Kodak made the magazine 8. It still had 8 millimeter film in the magazine, but it was like a precursor to the Super 8 cartridge. It was a little bit longer, but it came preloaded. Usually, you bought it with processing. You'd send the the magazine to the to the lab; they process it, and sometimes you could pay them to send it back with film, new film loaded in the magazine. What, what year are we talking? We're talking late '30s, early '40s. Mm-hmm. The Pony Express would bring it to the yeah, exactly awesome. right. This was not the, the but this did not become the staple, the main format. No, it didn't. It's kind of odd because Kodak always seems to capture that audience. Mm-hmm. They seem to capture that, mm-hmm. conquer yeah, the market. Everyone, Kodak every goes, once the world while. goes usually. Every once in a while, how come they the didn't best, able to? I, I I don't. I think it could have been because I think Kodak was the only ones making the magazines. So if you wanted to purchase another kind of film. You couldn't, because I don't think anybody, any of the manufacturers are making the magazines. So that kind of flopped out. There you go. It's the that. beginning of proprietary formats. Right. So Owen and I had not an uh, argument, but uh, I said... I'll kill you! <laughs> <laughs> I'll stab you! <laughs> no, I'm worried about this topic. To I'm worried about this topic, because I don't want to, you know, I, I don't, no, I feel like, Folks listening aren't interested in moving pictures, and I'm concerned. So I said, I don't know, is it film photography? You said, yes, it is. Yes. And then I said, oh, you know what? It is. You're shooting film. You're just shooting it faster. You're shooting it 24 frames a second. I mean, Mark, oh, if you had one of those fancy Nikons, don't they, aren't they practically movie cameras? Oh, uh, yeah, I guess if you want to do that, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's uh, but I'm just, oh, yes, Mark. So, and maybe you'll get to this already, but or back in the day, people had 8 millimeter projectors. Which, because very few people project film anymore. Now, if you find one, they're usually pretty beat up, or maybe it's been sitting in someone's basement and, and all that. So if you want to shoot 8 millimeter and you want to view it, what is their best option now? Don't look, you're looking at me. Well, <laughs> don't you guys do the film, film to digital option? Oh. Uh, <laughs> hell yeah. Yeah, I, I, w- I will say yes. Um, I am really all about scanning to file because not projection i'm personally i'm not into projection i want to get a file so that i can edit Uh add sound effects put it on put (laughs) put it on youtube Uh you know in a year (laughs) (laughs) but i'm not you know i don't consider myself the the majority i think uh especially with regulate this is just my opinion owen will take over the conversation, I think there are a lot of people who want to shoot to project. Well, yeah. That you, that's that's what you that, do. That is me, but for a while it was dictated by the fact that it was hard to find reversal movie film for a while when Kodachrome went away and then Ektachrome first went away. But as far as projectors go, that is a topic I had to talk about, okay. projectors. But I don't know if we want to get to that first or keep talking about formats. I don't really know anything. <laughs> Because we, we only made it to regular eight. <clears throat> All right, let's continue oh. our conversation about the uh, formats. Okay. Okay, so regular well, eight. Six, so 35 millimeter was the professional format that all the Hollywood movies exactly. or pre-Hollywood in Fort Lee, New Jersey yeah, the century, were shot. Turn became yeah. the cinematic standard. And right. the 16 millimeter was invented as an amateur I, or newsy type t- thing? I couldn't tell you when or how 16 mm. millimeter was. I, I don't know. I haven't researched that. But I know that that was the standard for movie film until Kodak decided, well, we need something with cameras that are smaller, with a format that's easier to use, it's cheaper. That makes sense. And so they, they realized they could take 16 millimeter film... Add some extra larger perfs, make a put it on a twenty foot spool, and make a camera that exposed half half of one side. Who invented oh. that? Kodak. Wow. Kodak some, invented radio wow. Movie film. Some bright mind at Kodak, Leslie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Came up with like like, like came up with that whole. It's mind blowing. It really is. Because I could just see them at their meeting explaining it. Whole room filled with cigarette smoke. Right. Yes. And whiskey. And whiskey. Yeah. Because. I mean, think about it. Almost seems impractical, like to shoot and then because consumer to have to flip it 
reload it, mm-hmm. shoot it again. Not to mention these are wind-up cameras, so lots of pausing. A lot of responsibility for the mom or the dad in the house. But but they had that responsibility then. They didn't. Everything wasn't super easy. So, you know, 35 millimeter camera, you had to focus it, f-stop, mm-hmm. shutter speed. Mm-hmm. There was no priority modes. So there was a little bit of work to everything. There wasn't a lot of people shooting. Do you think that imagine. Leslie that? Kodak saw a trend of, of people getting... Cassette 8. Oh, there you go. This is the cassette. I'm sitting here... <laughs> Don Cramp. <laughs> this is a sticker in there. Don Cramp. I, my, te- Mike said before I came, he said, do you have any movie cameras? I said, let me, look in the, let me look in my boxes. So I cleaned out a bunch of them. And I'm sitting here opening them, wondering, the most of them are 8, regular 8, yeah. straight 8. Mm-hmm. Do I have any that are cartridge? Because it was not common. Mm. No. And I just opened this up. And what is it a Revere? What is that? I don't know. They tape their tape there. There you go. They we'll tape this know. over it. We Let's know see. that Don Cramp. And inside. That. What if yes. Don Cramp is listening? It is a Revere. It is a Revere. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I doubt it. Right. <laughs> but I don't recognize the name. Yeah, inside there's one of those Dymo labels, you mm-hmm. know. It says, Don Cramp. That's funny because I'm having cramps right now. <laughs> <laughs> it was that lunch. Could that be converted? <laughs> Could that be converted? I don't think I. So I think Revere may have what? had their own. Does it say what eight. kind of oh. cassette? Does it give a brand uh, name? It might, it might be Revere proprietary. Use only Revere branded cassettes. Oh, Don Cramp. Could have. I would Maybe not have. Though? I would have not thought it was proprietary. I would have bet you it used Kodak. Could, could have been. Yes. It's an odd place to put your name. Because you have to open the camera this to is find it. Chicago. It's a USA type camera. Chicago. I don't think they'd have gone with an Agva mm-hmm. film or somebody else's. Right. Yeah. Um, they probably bought gonna, it at Central Camera. That's probably who sold oh, it to them. More than likely. Why do you suppose Kodak? Because from the mid '60s on through the '70s. They seem really then focused on getting everything into a cartridge. Because threading film was a pain in the butt. Because oh. if oh, you're butt your mouth. If you're if you if you're out you know, you're out shooting Johnny at soccer practice yeah. and all of a sudden the film's gotta be flipped over. So what? So you're standing up, you start flipping the film, then all of a sudden it, it falls in the mud. You drop it. You drop it. Mom's out, drinking a martini, out. and she's got a yeah, Virginia Slim in her mouth, so she's only got one hand. <laughs> uh, so the cartridge was the way to go. And when 126, 126 and Super 8 were sort of that whole era of instamatic cartridge systems. Right. The space that, age. Right. That revolutionized photography for the consumer. Do you think the people that had to thread their cameras when the cartridges came out would yell at the youngsters who had the cartridges? You don't even know. I used to have to thread my camera. And I used to have to flip it, put it in there. You need a lighter, Tony. You don't even know. I used to have to thread my camera. And I used to have to flip it, put it in there. You need, you need a lighter, Tony, that George fell into his French horn. You don't even know. I used to have to thread my camera. And I used to have to flip it, put it in there. Oh, boy. <laughs> Spoiled. Look at the size of it. We'll get to Super 8 eventually. Right? Yes, so yes. Regular 8. Okay. So Regular 8. Regular 8. Which is, which, was it hard to explain? Because Regular 8, it actually is 16 millimeter film in a 25 foot spool. Average Joe didn't know the difference. Didn't know. Average Joe probably didn't remember that they came out with this towards the end of the Depression. So a lot of people never owned movie cameras. They couldn't afford oh, the 16 yeah, millimeter. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So to them, nobody's doing this in the 30s except the highfalutin. Exactly. People. So it's just like... And their help. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Jeeves. 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 Love that camera. Right. We still need to record our commercial. Well, I have uh, the Oz- Ozzy and Harriet show. Uh, uh, they would cu- like they would do like a live commercial. Now here's Ozzy with news about big as life pictures. Oh. So an announcer would come on and be like, right. here's Ozzy to talk about the new Kodak home oh. movie camera. Or the pony. It was always the pony. And I want you to be Ozzy Osbourne. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne. Sharon, I love the goddamn thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll do. It. I'll sit you up. Here's Ozzy to talk about the new Kodak home movie camera. What? <laughs> <laughs> camera. I was, I was gonna write you a script. Um, when I used to tour with Black Sabbath. When I used to tour with the Beatles, I would always <laughs> shoot some of my pony. <laughs> <laughs> they, shoot, they shoot ponies, don't they? 
Please continue, Owen. Thank you. I can't. I have no idea what we were talking. About. And then John Lennon would come along. You don't know what you're talking about, Aussie. <laughs> talking about film formats. Film formats. So we were ta- oh, we were talking about uh, regular, regular eight. Away. Super eight. Super eight happens in sixty two. Sixty five. Sixty five. Yeah. Do I hear yeah. sixty six? <laughs> <laughs> because it was the anniversary uh, in twenty fifteen. Oh right. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So Super eight comes out, and Super eight is like a no brainer. Anybody yeah. who had a regular eight camera yeah. was like. Why would I not? Why would I not get this system? I mean, it, it, to the consumer, it was easier to load. The frame size was bigger. Cameras were new. Cameras were new. They were easier to use. They were lighter. They were usually made out of plastic. Uh, and Super 8 was the standard for movie making until, essentially, until home videos come out. I mean, wow. it's oh, video, definitely. You mean video, definitely. video, video, video. Mm-hmm. Like VHS. Did you try and compete in that market to make smaller cameras that were more no. convenient to use? I, I, I don't There's think there's never a 16 have. cartridge or, at all. Well. There was like, for was, example, this yeah. this Keystone camera, nineteen forty nine. Mm-hmm. So there were some families shooting actual sixteen millimeter yes, film. There were, but I would say that camera probably cost a fortune yeah. when it was brand new, okay. as opposed to the brownie that Leslie's got in her hand. Fiddling with and soon to hit the floor. Yeah, that's the camera my dad had. This Get one. out of town. What the hell are you saying? This is the classic eight millimeter brownie. You have one. Yeah, it's on my shelf at home. And it was your dad's? My family's... Well, give him a roll of film. Okay, we have film, have film for roll. it, John. Woohoo! Yeah. You, send so it to the, you can send it to the McCafferty machine. Lab in Cleveland, and they'll process it. It's silly. Yeah. So, I mean, that's why we're a project. Right. We're a project, yeah. Because, like, uh, you know, when I get in, I'm it's all a, in. A, uh, and, Leslie, where oh, did you... A film counter. Where did you oh, find all these cameras? I have no idea. They came wandering in your oh, store. They came wandering in. You this one's marked Reno. This one cracks me up because there's a there's a hand grip on the top, and when you pull the grip up, it makes the eyepiece. It makes your eyepiece. Oh, no Isn't that the slickest the thing? About that is what what year that was made. If that was a not, a Nazi camera. To me, this looks the most vintage <laughs> of all of them. The, Leslie, price, why do you have a Nazi camera? camera? <laughs> really? Because I. <laughs> Does it tell you where it was made? Is there some? Kind oh, it's of a Cine Kodak. It, it was made. It was made by the well, same the, people that made the Retinas. I'll bet you. Really? Cine Kodak Eight wow. Model Sixty. So it was a U.S. This one's actually got the, the German in it. Market. Anyway, so Super Eight, right? So we got the Super Eight. And then there was this thing called Double Super 8. Oh, now, why? Ooh, that's not... Double Super! <laughs> I did not know about like that. A, that's sounds like a Chinese... Uh, was it necessary? Was, was it, it necessary? Consumer? It was consumer, but it, w- it seems to mostly have been Eastern European. Okay. Or mostly European. Uh, I, I'm not really sure, but it looked just like your standard 8, 25-foot roll, uh, but it had Super 8 perf, mm. and you would shoot it like regular 8, and it would project in a Super 8 projector. And there were a bunch of German cameras called Quartz, or not German, sorry, Russian cameras called Quartz. Yes. That you can still buy on Etsy today, and they're fantastic. They still work. I think it was the Scopic. There was a there was a Canon, I think a Canon model that also shot. But okay. But it was mostly used for like um, student film production. Okay. In Jersey, it's Scopic. Scopic. <laughs> Scoop and what's that format called? Double Super Eight. Double Stop. Super Eight fried chicken. But like, it's not even, like, it's not even <laughs> worth talking about. Foma still makes it. Right. There's like three people I think in the world that still shoot it. So, wow. so the super supermarket you got. Down yeah, there. yeah, exactly. Down in the Halden. So that was super early supermarket. It says super supermarket. Really? Is it? Yeah. Is it, Mark? Is it I don't know. I took photographs of it. You didn't go in? No, I didn't go okay. in. Okay. It's probably as good as Jack's Superfood Town. Ugh. It can't be. Rats in there. <laughs> you know there are. Ooh. Do you want to take a... We'll read a quick letter. Okay, John. This is from uh, Tom Murray. Yes. Uh, hey, Mike, another good show. I may have to pick up a minute 16. Oh, no. No. <laughs> My, it's a minute enough. 16. Is it minute? Yeah, it's a minute oh, 16. Minute 16. They're cheap enough, and since I've been buying strictly for the display, that wouldn't count as gas, right? Is right. that gas? Okay. Yes. Uh, question. One of my Super 8 cameras is a sound camera. If my obsession compelled me to ignore all of your well-founded warnings, and I decided to shoot an old roll, and I did get an image, are you able to scan it with sound? There are a couple places that will process, and I figure... I'll at least have to try it once at some point. So that was awesome. I'm going to shot you in the Okay. Can you do Super 8 sound? 
Uh, we do not have... Yeah, yes, we are capable of doing Super 8 sound, yes. but we do not have the sound head for our scanner. Yes, it's an extra piece, and uh, if I told you like the amount of money I would have to invest to get that piece is ridiculous. But what I would do... For example, Tom, uh, I have some Super 8 sound films like Airport oh. 75. <laughs> yeah, look at that. It's amazing. Uh, I'm, I'm going. Really to, I'm going to buy a sound projector, and I'm going to record the sound off of the projector because it usually was like a, a port on the side. Mm, auxiliary out. Uh-huh. Ex- Clark, baby, Clark. <laughs> it's it Charlton Heston. Out of sync and slow. Well, it actually will be out of sync, but I could in I could finagle with it in the Final Cut 10 that I use for my sound film. I'm going to scan it here beautifully, Dave. Is going to scan it beautifully. Of course. And then I'm going to output the sound from a projector and then in my edit program, you know, to the best of my ability, marry them together. Well, the sound from the projector. Well, no. I, we, the the <laughs> sound port won't yeah, pick up the projector okay. sound. But ironically, sometimes I add that in the oh, post-production okay. process. Absolutely. So what else does Tom have to say? Uh, that's it. Oh, Tom is a, a regular FPP listener. Yep. Uh, Tom has brought all of his family's home movies over to FPP to scan. He brought his family and his in-laws' family over. The movies, not them. And a fun fact about <laughs> Super 8 sound movie cameras. Yes. You can shoot silent yeah. cartridges. Yes, you can. You can. And they're great cameras to use because usually they can handle the higher ASA films where a lot of early Super 8 cameras can't. I shot Super 8 sound in collage. <laughs> and then listen to this Leslie I'm gonna get a kick out of this okay don't take a drink right so you record the sound and then when you got your film processed you could in the projector record a secondary track put a microphone in on the projector while you were while it, yes Wow. So you could like kind of cool. synchronize some music voice over synchronize yeah. music huh. ambient yeah. awesome. room and did you ever do that? Yeah, once or twice. He did. What sound effects? Fart sound effects? Potato, no. <laughs> potato, potatoes dying. <laughs> potatoes. I, I only have one or two movies with Super 8 sound on it. Yeah. It was but, expensive. Uh, I think I bought that. I did it was. My, I did my final film? film one project on a sound Super 8 cartridge. Okay. Is cars. that uh, perchance to dream? Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, I can't believe you remember that. <sighs> well, I, but your films are here at FPPHQ yeah. in a box. The Green Man. Green Man. Perchance to dream. Perchance to dream. And there's one other, like a THX 738 type oh, of thing. Wow. About, That's the Green Man. No, about like robots taking over the supermarket, like... Your friend Tom is in it. It's like a THX 1138 kind of situation. Yeah, very influenced by those films. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure my film is way better. Uh, <laughs> but you're, you're absolutely right, Owen. Like, my, if I look at my home movies that I shot, I only shot Summer in August because I didn't have the money to shoot Super 8 regularly. So I literally had a, I went to the, bought three rolls in August, shot it, Ortley Beach. Yeah, with your buddies. My buddies and my, and my parents. And then that was the epic film for the year. You, Rest- never, you never covered the holidays? No. Oh, Christmas. No. Wow. I shot S- SX-70 holidays, but no home. It was just too expensive. It was, yeah. Do you, I don't know back in, let's say, 1981 what a Super 8 cartridge Majority was. Majority of Super 8, when you bought it, had processing included. So it was a little... Mm. Yeah, I got them at the phone. Not in the, that. Probably not in the 80s. Not in the 80s? Okay. No, no I, I did not 60s, get processing with it. 60s no. and 70s, yes. usually they came with processing included. We would run our film over to Route 208 in Fairlawn, right here in Fairlawn. Really? Coda Lux. Oh, really? Sure. I gave mine yes. a photo map. There was a photo map. They still had those little booths. Up it ended up in six photo hats. Same maybe? Did you? Yes, Leslie. It ended up at that point about $20 to buy a Super 8 cassette and have it processed mm-hmm. at in Findlay, of course, the local Kodak plant in Findlay. Mm-hmm. And come in about $19, $20, and then it happened. What? VHS videotape. Oh. And what was the cost of a VHS two-hour videotape? Back then? $20. But you still had to buy the shoulder system, the camera. It just didn't even phase people. Yeah. They, they didn't phase They them. wanted it. They wanted it. And then yeah, they shot the floor. It. They kept it running. Well, that's yeah. a good point. Right. Because home kept movie, walking. like I look at my, my dad had a eight millimeter videotape. That's yes, yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. In the early 90s. Like, like yes. Eight Sony millimeter. eight millimeter. Oh, right, right, yeah. right. I'm glad we have them, but like... You just filmed everything. Because why, why wouldn't you? 
But like when I look at my grandfather's home movies on Super 8, they're three minutes of all these really interesting mm-hmm. shots. It's craft. You're not going to sit there and shoot ten rolls of film. Yep. Movie film. Yeah. Just like Is digital it? shooters and film shooters. Sure. Still. Yes. You shoot like I literally watched someone get out at Gettysburg like, with a digital camera. Yeah. Still. <laughs> they got out of their car. They panned. <laughs> their digital camera got back in the car and left. That's right. Whereas a film person, of course, you're thinking explore. every frame counts, explore, yeah. get the good shot. So we have it in all formats, I guess. Sure. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, Photomat for Super 8. Now, when you were shooting 16 mil- millimeter in collage, to go into the city. You would get on a bus, go into the city. No, I would drive in. You had a bridge and tunnel. Oh, you I would? I drove in, and somebody would jump out of the car. I forget what the name of the lab was, but it was, it was up a, a set of stairs. Rafik? It was like, a, maybe. Or Kinolux. Kinolux, that was it. So, you go up a set of stairs, and then you would go into the building and then go up another long set of stairs and at the top that's, that's where you third, bought the film Rafik was the man in the high castle <laughs> yeah it was it was like rickety <laughs> stairs right off, it was a really old crotchy man that place smelled like chemicals and you drop it off and you'd be like ah, two days <laughs> it's like George Carlin's bit about the pharmacist Kenalux the guy lived in Wayne, New Jersey and John West and I used to drop the film into his milk box oh no way I swear to God. No, I didn't know about this. Yeah, how come you didn't know about it? Because Tarbucks hated me. No, she you didn't. Were in the club. She did. I hated her. <laughs> she was a pretentious little. Oh. <laughs> we always fought Tarbucks in it. So she didn't tip me to that dude. Really? Yeah. Sounds like a great topic. Well, we weren't actually in. Exactly. We were in different classes, I think. We weren't in the same. Did it keep you guys apart? Yes. Yes, yes. Mike and John can't sit next she to each She said she had a chance to work with Woody Allen, but turned it down so she could teach. About bullshit. A bunch of bratty I, I, I sought out John as a student because he would write, and I was a shooter. I didn't write, and I still don't write anything. So John do you would know how to write? barely. <laughs> The signature. Why do you think the blocks take so long? I, I, I can't read. Uh, yeah, so I was looking for people to, cl- in, like in collage, mm-hmm. would find people to collaborate with to make movies. And there were only, I swear, it was like four people. We were going to do a project, me, you, and John West, that never got off the ground. The banana fish. Yes, yeah, so we were, like went to South Jersey looking for locations. We were going to shoot. A script. Yes. Where's that script? We'll shoot it now. Who knows? It's on a floppy disk somewhere. It's in a, in, not even. It's on a note in a notebook. And it was based on a J.D. Salinger story. That's right. Yeah. See, in college, you don't care about rights. Right. Yeah. Right. You just, they still don't. You can do whatever yeah. you want in college. You do whatever, anything you want. We got up to Super Eight sound. Well, that's pretty much it, right? I mean, Super Eight. As far as the average Joe, like Super Eight, and then it goes into video. Sixteen um, video. You know, but just like you were saying, Leslie, when video comes out, oh. that's pretty much it. Super Eight I becomes a, an obscure format. Mm-hmm. So you said eight, eight. Was it Super Eight video or just eight? <laughs> eight millimeter video. Eight millimeter. Yeah. And then there was high eight. That's high correct. Eight. Yeah. That's right. There's that also the format I used for the Food Network. We'd shoot high eight video. High eight. Well, there's also digital eight. Digi eight. Yes. There is. Digi eight. Mm-hmm. High and eight. I can still transfer them all. You can transfer digital eight. I think I can. Time to wake this show up. Back before home video, VHS, DVD. In order to see a movie at home, it was you know extraordinary yeah. to have you know. My parents never owned pre-recorded movies. They would just project whatever my dad shot. Mm-hmm. But clearly, there were pockets of kids who collected these pre-recorded Frankenstein, Dracula, the Wolfman. And that's just horror. Of course, every other genre, yeah, westerns. My dad collected uh, boxing films when he was a kid. That's fascinating. Now, did your dad have any home movies? Like Abbott and Costello? He or was a teacher. So oh. we had a 16 millimeter projector that he would bring oh, home from yes. school. Yes. No way. He yes. would bring home a catalog that the teachers would order educational films on. But there was always other films. There was a science fiction section, a horror section, a sports section. So you could get games, football mm-hmm. games. Mm-hmm. And we often got, because my dad reels. was a football coach, we got the Super Bowl highlights reels. So right. we would screen those in our basement, and all the kids from the neighborhood would come over because Big deal. Know, yeah. nobody else could watch movies or project movies. That's you very know? interesting. It was great. I have some of those educational films, Mike, if, if you want to scan them. Oh, okay. Now, Leslie, oh, this, this is a big bag. Laurel it is. Marty. And in this bag, there's, there were companies like Castle Films. Yep, they were big. Uh, Ken Films as a sports parade so it'll be like a highlight reel right. of like the year sometimes yeah Olympic stuff would be on there uh, what's, this, what's this stag I, who knows I, I, don't, I have no idea my oh. grandfather had those 
Oh, and when you were, um, you know, in the whatever the fifties or sixties, you went to your photo. Well, (laughs) traditionally, you went to your photo dealer, Mm -hmm. and they would not only sell you the camera, they would sell you the projector. So, well, yeah, you needed something to project. Is this the sound strip? This little yes, the magnetics, yeah, the light brown. Mm -hmm. And what is the best projector to own? Oh, well, Hmm. it depends on the format. How long have you got? Right. I mean, but really, you could do a whole segment on, on just that alone. I would say that, for me, my favorite brand of projector is Bell & Howell. I've never really owned sound movies except for 16 millimeters. Auto-load projectors. What was that whole space and time where, across the land, dads were cursing because you'd put the film in and it would just crunch all the film in it? What's with that? Sucks. Why does it happen? Yes. Or, well, it usually is a user error. Oh. It's a user error. Okay. Either there's a bad oh, splice. Dad, Dad had a couple of uh, Schlitzes <laughs> and, and something, you know, and then that was it. There goes Johnny's first steps. So the auto load was perfect. You just, just watch just it burn. Watch thre- it crinkle thread burn. It. And, and in the 1970s, they became even more automated. Like they had the, the, the movie decks that Kodak made. You didn't even, like, touch the film. Didn't it you did like all the movie you. deck that fit on? It's called the library version. Yeah. And it projected 90 degrees out, so you didn't have to project it out. It just mm. used a little mirror, right. and you could leave it set right on the shelf. There you go. It's so cool. Can I tell you something secret? You're not going to tell anybody else? Yeah. More. You're in a safe space. Auto-threading 16-millimeter oh uh, yes. film cameras and projectors. I have a secret fetish for watching that thing, that thing go through. I swear to God, is, I would yeah. be thrilled to know and to watch it just feed and go around. Like, oh, my God. Oh, John likes to watch the film cleaner. Have you seen the film cleaner in action yet? No. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, I'll watch it for hours. Yeah, we'll leave them alone. Oh, my God. It's amazing. It's and a gas mask. Kaleidoscope. And it's Don't rub your eyes, though. Mold. Yes. Uh, this one's... Reel number two. And that's another topic we'll talk about. Kaleidoscope? <laughs> no. But how to clean your film, movie film. Great. I've got oh. an ex- pre, a pre-example yeah, exactly. for you. You can talk about the after. As growing up, I don't remember anyone ever cleaning movie film. Do you? Why would you? Never. It was new back then. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I never saw my dad clean film once. Yeah. No. Why would you? So clear, clearly, John, because you mentioned stag reels, yeah. the only thing I knew about stag reels was Bugs Bunny cartoons. He'd be threading a projector in the cartoon, and it'd be like, oh, stag reel, and you actually saw a stag. Uh, the oh. head, <laughs> yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Where? So stag reels <laughs> traditionally, they were sold in camera stores <laughs> under the counter, so to speak, quote unquote, under the counter. It's like in the back of the store, right? So the 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 proprietor would say, you know, oh, out of the corner of his mouth to the dad. Well, a, yes. a catalog business. <laughs> Mails in. Oh, Who's this from? That's from Joby. Okay. Joe Brunches. Joe Brunches. Joby. Whoa! Jam packed! Whoa! 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 Salem Baking Salem Company. Baking. Whoa! Oh, those, Whoa. yeah. Caramel chocolate chips. Are those mint? These are from FPP Super Pal Joseph Grunges. So, Leslie Basinby gave me a large bag of not home movies, 8 millimeter movies, like store bought, pre recorded. And one of them says, Ouija's Magic Camera. No way. That sounds like a stink. Oh, Ouija. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Now, have you seen this film? I have not. Oh, I'd love to see that. Is it all crime scenes? you got to be careful of crumbs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm. We'll be right back mm. after this message. Thank you, Ms. Walker. Oh, by the way, did you notice our new prices on Brownie movie cameras? They're reduced to almost $10. Yes, I did see them, but we're not quite sure whether we take enough movies to make it worthwhile. Let me show you something. Here's a reel of Kodak home movies. Now, suppose these were your movies, and on this reel you had movies of, oh, let's say this young lady learning to walk, and her sister all dressed up and looking pretty. All your vacations. Suppose you had all that and more in action and in color. That'd be worth a fortune, wouldn't it? Oh, yes. Well, it uh, doesn't cost a fortune at all, especially now. You know, this camera was a bargain at thirty-nine seventy-five, and now it's only twenty-nine ninety-five, or three dollars down. You really couldn't make a better investment for your family. Here, try it. See how easy it is. 
Why don't you visit your Kodak dealer this week? It's a great time to make your family movie stars. Mail's in. We have one more letter. Hi, Mike. I've had time to look at the scans and would like to thank you for a job well done. The image quality of the scan is excellent, and the registration with the perps is solid. This is for a Lomo Chemo. Chemo. Which is a pain in the ass to transfer. Lomo Chemo is a whole different... Did I say Chemo? Yes. Lomo Chemo. Spencer. Sorry. Um, as an observation, I noticed that the Lomo Chemo camera registration skips a lot. This is not the scan as the perps are solid, but the film position in the camera must jitter quite a bit. So there is a jumpiness, even with the rolls I shot using a tripod. In your experience, is this something that you see a lot with the Lomo Kino films? Perhaps it has to do with how I'm using the camera, so your feedback would be appreciated. It is good to have these excellent quality scans of my Lomo Kino films. The 16 millimeter photogram scan is very useful for one of my works in progress and it may be the next experimental short I release. The problem with Lomo Kino is the hand, it's a plastic camera, the hand crank. If you're not consistently cranking at the same speed, click, 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 click. If you're doing it too fast, like click, 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 click. It starts missing frames. Aha, makes sense. It does make sense. Some students that have sent films in, there are large gaps where frames are actually missing. Oh, really? Because they're too frenetic. With the, they're trying to crank faster. Too jerky. Can't. Too, they're, yes. They're, too jerky. They're caffeined up. They're, <laughs> they're caffed up, Mr. Brown. So you can't crank too fast. You can't crank phonetically. You can't crank fast, then go slow. You have to just be. be click, click. Mark O'Brien's doing it right now. Click, 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 click. Yes. And just go with that. Did you find that on the movies you shot with it? Did you get those skipping frames? I did not. Because I was just consistently just click, 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 click. Here we go. Click, 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 click. Man, there must be a lot of sugar in those cookies. It's like, boop, boop, bing, bing. Man, there must be a lot of sugar in those cookies. Bing, bing, bing. It's like, yes, I did see them, but. Sugar, boop, sugar, boop, boop. sugar. It's like, sugar. I had it. Hey. Don't make me take this to the principal's office. Do we have a deal? We're not quite sure whether we take enough movies to make it worthwhile. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, why don't we wrap up this show? What show? <laughs> uh, we really could use your feedback. Podcast at filmphotographyproject.com. This is our first, you know, venture into home movie film. There's so many topics, so many offshoots of the, the various formats. Uh, we probably only touched upon it. I didn't get to my various home movie catalogs. We only touched upon Famous Monsters of Filmland. We didn't talk about Sam Sherman. And Yeah, and he that, that's a whole show. I want to thank everyone for uh, listening. Please do check out our YouTube channel. I rarely talk about that. It's called Film Photography Tube on YouTube. It's very original. Because Project wouldn't fit. It was just, you only had so many. So you can go there and all of our 16mm and 8mm film tests, as well as Owen explaining how to process home movie film at home. It's easier than you think. It's easy, and our goal moving forward, our goal is to make this hobby inexpen- as inexpensive as humanly possible for you. So you could get a roll of film, shoot it, process it yourself, and then project it in your living room. Your- Side of somebody's house, whatever. If you, don't want to spend, <laughs> if you don't want to spend the money for the scan, right. there are ways to get around it with like a digital camera. You project it against a wall really small, so it's tight, and then you shoot. I mean, this, this, you can do it on the cheap. Mm-hmm. And people who don't want to do it on the cheap, you email me, Michael at filmphotographyproject.com. Oh boy. And I'd be so happy to scan. I'm so thrilled when people send me their home movie film. It's so cool. So awesome. Uh, thanks to Joby for sending us those snacks. Oh boy. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you next time.
Oh boy. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah.